Hey, buddy, Jeff from Jim Solius Acolius. How's everybody's summer going? Like this, right? <laughs> uh, and the the older I get, the more uh, I guess is you just cherish your time more. You, you're busier. Uh, I mean, when you're younger, you're busy doing your thing, and then when you get older, you're busier doing other things, and it just I don't know. Jeez, that's was that a word salad? I guess. Uh, anyway, um, been a little while. Hope everybody's doing well, and. Uh, at this point, um, most of my coleus have been sold at the farmer's market. I still have a handful left, uh, more than a handful. I have about 20 pots or so, hanging baskets and so forth. Um, hanging baskets are kind of funny. Uh, they started off real good this, this season, and then it kind of waned off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a couple things. I'm going to cut a couple of the hangers off and just sell them as regular pots. And I did... This year, I featured them on the ground rather than hanging because when I used, when I actually uh, put them on my table or when I hung them from my awning, people just didn't seem to appreciate because they're kind of looking up. So anyway, that's um, that's my experience selling coleus over the years. Uh, every week is different. I start off real quick, uh, really slow, and then I'll start getting busy, or I could sit for two hours and people will walk by and a lot of compliments. People love plants. Some people, I uh, don't have a green thumb. I'll just kill them and so forth. But I enjoy the conversation and promoting my channel if I can. Uh, besides the YouTube channel here, which it's all tied in together, the YouTube channel teaching people how to grow coleus, then growing and creating the pots to sell at the farmer's market. And then later or during the course of the season, growing um, coleus for just seeds. And that's what I'm gonna get into today. Um, as I start to close off uh, my farmer's market, I'm gonna start to focus more on collecting my coleus seeds. So if you're interested in collecting coleus seeds for yourself, stay tuned. Also, I do, if you're not aware, I have an eBay listing called Jim's Coleus on eBay, and I, I will sell the coleus seeds featured on my YouTube channel that you see here, and they're all non-patented legal to propagate coleus seeds, which means there are certain coleus that are new, uh, that uh, people own patents to and I would never infringe on that and sell seeds that are patented so I'm not going to focus on teaching you how to separate the seeds what I'm going to do is show you if you're interested in harvesting seeds what you have to do to make sure you get the best with most mature seeds so let's go take a look uh, before we do the uh, seeds I'm going to just show you what I have left over okay so um I have this, again, if you're following along, you know I have this. Let me zoom out a little bit. I have this uh, little plant station that I, uh, I've been using this year. Uh, now, we're expecting some rain, or it has been raining, uh, but we're going to have some showers and so forth later. And uh, these are well watered. I don't want to get them saturated. I don't want too much water because it's, it's not good for the pots. Uh, for the potted for potted coleus, it's not really good to get saturated. They, they don't like soggy soil. So try not to, if you know you have a potted coleus and it's outside and you're expecting heavy, heavy rains, you know, give them some rain, but you don't want to have a potted coleus sitting, even with a well-drained pot. They don't really like saturated, soggy, soggy soil. So here are some of the hanging baskets that I've left over and a few other coleus. Again, I'm just... Uh, sheltering them from any real heavy rain that I'm expecting and here are some others that I've been trimming and they they really didn't do too great here um, you know I've I learned every year I learned something and one thing I did differently this year is this table I didn't have this table last year and the one thing I learned and what I did is I, I kept a lot of the coleus out on this table um, rather than in the greenhouse uh, but the one problem with that is the one night I was at work uh, we got a heavy thunderstorm and it just saturated the soil too much and I had to trim a lot of them because they just um, it, it just wreaked havoc on on the coleus they, they just don't like that heavy 
especially these uh, wizards. They just kind of turned. But I sold 90% of them. And every year I always have a, a few left over that just, they, whatever, for whatever reason, they're not strong coleus and they didn't do too well. And it's it's not a big deal. I just empty the soil, uh, mulch them, you, and reused, you know, uh, re fortify the soil for later. But, you know, these are really, this is really, there's a, just a handful I may bring to. Uh, like this one here is still pretty nice um, and these here obviously I'm not gonna sell these um, just a handful of these small ones I sold most of the small ones those are all gone um, so just a handful at the farmers market and of course these hanging baskets and I, I mentioned what I'm gonna do is on a few of them I'm gonna cut I'm actually gonna remove I don't have to cut these, these actually will pop off. I'm just gonna remove the hangers and see how they go because they're really, really healthy. Let me bring one of them out. All right, I lied, I brought a few of them out, but you can see they're very healthy. They're still very, very healthy. I trimmed them a lot last week because again, they were outside and I I just, the, the weather around here is so, it's so, even with forecasts, it's so difficult. And we got a real heavy thunderstorm and they got a little too, too much uh, water. And uh, so I did trim with these a lot and they're coming back. They, they're still very, very beautiful and I can sell them. So um, this is about it. And I have a few on the other side. And here's a couple of pots. This is the Saturn. Um, I'm gonna bring these to the farmer's market because even though they're not um, really to what I would say my standards, People, um, I've noticed over the years, there's always people who wanted a Saturn or some, a Saturn color eye, a coloration, a Saturn rings or Saturns. And, uh, you know, if I leave them home, people aren't going to see them. So I bring them. And this is still a fairly beautiful coleus. And it's healthy. There's nothing wrong. You see see what happens with the, the moisture. Got a little mold, a little, that little fuzzy mold, the downy mildew. So we're going to brush that off. You can actually just brush that away. It's not killing the plant, but, um, it, it, you know, that's uh, something you want to watch out for. And these are well-drained pots, but, again, um, I'm keeping this sort of out, um, sheltered. And this is just some of these are mine that I'm not selling. I have these. Um, these are actually... Uh, from my arrow garden, there are cal calabroques, uh, calabrocoas. Sorry, Cher. That's an inside joke between my friend Sherry and I. Uh, I could never pronounce the word calabrocoa. Uh, but these are calabrocoas that I grew from my arrow garden. I potted them up, and uh, you know I'll bring them to the farmers market. People always love flowers. Now that they're flowering, I may have a good chance of selling them. And there's your Mariposa Sherry. This is a rooting my friend Sherry in Canada sent me uh, at the beginning of the year. Got a little uh, weed there. And it's slowly. It's it's just been very, very slow. I did trim it. Uh, I need some more trimming. But it's coming in. And here's just a handful of others. These I really trimmed. These, these really got damaged from the... They didn't do well with the storm. Uh, not from the wind damage, just from the rain too much so I really trimmed it but it's coming back and I had them I, I moved them out from under the table and there's a few larger ones that I'll bring to the farmers market so so I'm pretty much done I, I expect maybe two more markets unless I sell everything out this Thursday and then we're gonna focus on the seeds now we're gonna get to the seeds now okay so um, these are mosaics. I'm gonna, I, I love the mosaics, they're pretty cool. And the one thing with these is they went to seed really, really fast. So I decided to keep this group just for seeds. So I have all mosaics in a separated area by themselves. I had these in the greenhouse for the longest time uh, by the window. Uh, by the back window they get pollinated, but I, I felt that maybe they weren't getting pollinated well enough um, 
and it's absolutely not necessary, but um, I can come out and hit with the brush. But uh, I put them out here yesterday. I'm going to keep them out for a few, for maybe a week, but I'm going to watch again with the rain coming in. I'm going to have to move them. But this is pretty well sheltered here. I have this uh, big, big neighbor's um, tree and bush over here, so it, it doesn't, it won't get that downpour. But again, I have these out to get pollinated and these will be separated and I'll have them on my Jim's Coleus seed listing. Now over to the other end of my yard, we go to another Coleus separated from here that's going to seed. Okay, now if you remember, if you're following along, this was that little, not little, but this was a small potted um, Saturn's rings overwintered coleus that had a lot of seed stalks coming in and I hand pollinated them and that's those other seed, the other Saturn's rings that you saw on the deck that I'm going to bring to the uh, farmer's market were from this plant, from this mother plant so as you can see here, this thing is inundated with seed stalks. So this is here. This is the only coleus here that is going to seed, which is going to really minimize cross-pollination. So the seeds will be as pure uh, for this plant. And I have a lot of these seeds. So I will have seeds to this plant, to this coleus on my Jim's coleus eBay listing and that'll start around the end of September I'll, I'll definitely let you know if it's earlier but I need time for these to mature I'm gonna to get to that next okay now on the other end of my yard I have this defiance and I only have one and I love these um, so this one is going not a lot of seeds uh, so I have a handful, about three stalks, so I'm expecting more of them. So I should have some Defiant Seeds on my eBay listing. These are non-patented, but they're beautiful, beautiful coleus. And I only had this one this year, and it's done really, really well. Okay, so let's get to knowing when to cut your seed stalks. All right, in general, if you are interested in harvesting your own colia seeds and you have a plant that's going to seed stalk, that's growing seed stalks, let them flower, let them stay on your coleus for as long as possible until they start to brown. What you, want, you, what you want to do is you want to let them, again, stay on, stay on the coleus for as long as possible until it starts to brown, and then you can cut it, and then you bring it in. I have trays, marked trays, and then I let them completely dry out. You want your seed stalk to be completely dry out, so we're talking a few months now i mean that you, you don't need a few months but i let them dry out completely because i have i'll have an awful lot of them and i let them completely dry out because when the, once they're really dry and brittle the seeds pop out they just fall out hopefully so some varieties are stubborn but for the most part uh they will drop out and you'll have plenty of seeds Okay, over here on this side of my yard, here I have this single hanging basket. Um, here's an Empire Kong. These are beautiful. Uh, again, these are amongst my favorite because the leaves will either grow like this or even bigger. I have some in the front. In my front yard, we're going to show you how big they get, the leaves. But here is a seed stalk. And you can see it just keeps growing and growing and growing and so forth. So this is a good uh, seed stalk to a con. And you can see it's still pretty green. It's got lots of flowers. So I'm not going to cut this. This is really not 
ready to be cut. It'll generally start to brown on the bottom. And again, these just keep wanting to grow as tall as possible. So, but I will keep this on for a good couple of months until it's well pollinated and it starts to turn brown. So be, be, um, be patient. The longer you leave your seed stalk on, the more viable your seeds, the bet you much better chance you'll have of having mature viable seeds. So be patient and let them stay on a few months. But again, a good rule is if, if it starts to become brown on the bottom here, you'll wait another week or so. And of course the tops that develop, unless you pick them off the top like that and you keep it from growing taller, then all of these eventually will um, become brown. Not necessarily if 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 it, this much of it or 75 80 percent of it is is brown and I may pick it uh, depending on how many seed stalks I have. Um, but be patient. Let the stalk stay on. Let it get pollinated and let it turn brown and then you can cut it. And you can cut it at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I cut it at the base so you get as many seeds. Um, but this will yield hundreds and hundreds of seeds. Not all seed stalks are tall. Um, this particular variety has shorts. These are like the jitters variation. And I'll, I'll throw these into like the mix. Uh, because oh, I have no other coleus here. Um, okay, I do. I, ha I have the mosaics back here. I forgot that are going to seed. So I'll put these in it with the surprise mix. Because you may get some cross. You're going to get some cross pollination here. But that's kind of cool. Might get like a, a little mixture of this here and here. I love cross pollinating coleus seeds uh, because you never know. That's my surprise mix, and you'll get that in my coleus, my Jim's coleus um, seed. You'll get a, a, a surprise coleus mix, which is going to be a mix of different coleus seeds, possibly cross-pollinated, and you never know what's going to grow. The color, the, the variations, and so forth, and maybe like this, it might have a little mosaic in it. It's really cool. I love cross-pollinating. But you can see, not all coleus seed stalks are tall. These generally, in my experience, tend to be short and stout and full and thick. So again, same principle, I leave them on and let them stay on for a few months, let them cross pollinate, brown, and then I cut them, dry them completely, and then harvest the seeds and stay tuned. I will be shooting that video in the fall on how to separate your coleus seeds from the seed stalks. The easiest way that I found to do it and it's a lot of fun and if you want to grow your own coleus from seed it's just it's it's really a lot of fun and it's very simple and you don't have to grow 500 coleus you can grow a dozen you can buy the little jiffy pod sets that have 15 pods uh 10 pods and grow 20 or 40 coleus it's really really neat okay here's another empire this is the little bigger now this is medium compared to the one we just saw so these are medium, and I love these empires. Look at the size of this. This is just a monster, monster coleus. But these are a medium size empire mix, a uh, Kong. It's an empire Kong. Now we're gonna go in the front, and I'm gonna show you these jumbo mammoth empire Kongs. Okay, now these are my front planters. These are just for my house. And as you can see, these things are like elephant ears. They are monsters, monsters. Look at these. That's a nice arrangement that I made up here. Empire Kong, uh, some Christmas candy. There's a Christmas candy seed stalk. So I'll try to have these Christmas candies on my Jim's Coleus eBay listing. So save that. Jim's Coleus on eBay. Christmas candies. These are only, these are the only coleus that are going to seed out front here. So we're gonna have 
these. The difference between these Christmas candies and the mosaics, mosaics are only have the red. Uh, they're like a different. Um, they're they're a little different, a little greener. Um, but Christmas candies. And again, keep the stalks on for a few months. Let them completely get pollinated. Let them dry. Start to brown, and then you cut them, bring them in, let them dry out. And there's some jades. Uh, don't have any jades uh, going to seed. And again, if I had a jade going to seed in a pot, I would have it separated. Uh, but these are pretty nice. But these are they didn't they didn't really grow as large as I had hoped. Uh, but they they did pretty well out here And here is another On the other end of my front yard. There's another one. I just threw together Again, I just arranged these uh, if you follow along. I did a video when I arranged these and there's another This is more of like a uh, a Kong red um, almost like wizard rose because it has the white and the red and the black excuse the traffic so these all have on my eBay listing here's a these are from that mosaic you can see the little difference and that's an interesting one not sure what uh, that was like a um, I got a handful of these greens with a almost like a neon uh, I kind of like the way these look so I threw them in up front here it was the only one I think I had one other one in the uh, greenhouse or in one of the, my hanging baskets but this is kind of cool it's a nice arrangement and this is a uh, if you follow along you may have seen this before this is a, a big red um, child's little red wagon that somebody had thrown out like five years ago and uh, I saw it and I took it and I repurposed it and um, I don't move it it's it's really holding I don't know what's holding it together uh, I did drill holes into it so it drains and I uh, I either put mixed flowers or mostly coleus here because there's a lot of shade in the front that's the only downfall with the front here is there's a lot of shade um, but this year I haven't gotten a lot of insects. Usually I get a lot of insects out front here. You can see like holes in the coleus, but they haven't really chomped away. So uh, a pretty good year. Every year it's a little different, but you can see it's mostly empires and there's that green, and that's kind of neat. That's sort of like a pineapple, but it's really, it was a jade really, but it just, this one's brighter. But that was a jade, or is a jade, it just, changed a little bit into more of like a, a yellowing pineapple it's kind of neat and that's what's cool about coleus is if you grow a lot of them you're going to get a lot of variations and that's what's exciting about it and there's one of my hanging baskets uh wiz wizard rose and a jade that's a beautiful wizard i mean I, i'm i don't want to bring that to the farmer's market to sell i may um but that's really from my home but just beautiful. Uh, hanging baskets are a lot of fun. I, I don't know why they don't sell as fast uh, as other pots. I just, I'll never understand it. How about this beauty? Now, I just trimmed this a little bit. And now this is outside. This is in the rain. I mean, this gets rain, but it's a little sheltered here. And it, it seemed to do okay. So, Again, as a jade, but it's very small. The, the leaves are very dainty in this jade. And that's like a chocolate covered cherry mix. And I did trim it. So, I mean, it did get a little bit of damage. And there's a little wizard rose on the bottom. It did get a little damage from the storm. And I have to trim it. See how it's kind of how tall it's getting up here. So, I'm just going to really pick the top. And believe me, the more you do this, the more it stimulates the coleus, especially this time of year when it's, you know, you're getting humid weather, rainy weather, warm weather. When you trim the tops like this, it really stimulates new growth. It doesn't take long as much as it hurts to trim them. And you're like, oh my God, what am I doing here? You see that needs to be cut off. I'm just doing it with my fingers, folks, but um, it's, it's best to use the scissors. 
you can see some damaged leaves and so forth but this is pretty healthy but again I just trimmed it you can see had some more larger leaves that were damaged just from the rain and they were older um, and that'll fill in really quick another not even a week it'll fill in so it's a beautiful color I love this it's a nice contrast nice little ceramic pot and I did drill holes in the bottom with a masonry drill bit so it does have drainage very important to keep your pots drained and this again this was that single potted overwintered coleus that I had and it is a monster now and it had some uh, it actually I'm not letting it go to seed because I have another one that's gone to seed so I'm just enjoying this one and that's another thing too if you don't let your coleus go to seed if you keep snipping the seed stalks off you'll keep your coleus nice and healthy and full if you let it get inundated like that Saturn's rings with seeds it's going to decline the plant the plant itself is going to look horrible because the energy that it's the energy required to maintain grow and maintain seed stalks is is incredible it takes all of the energy that would otherwise go to maintaining the plants the root structure the stems new growth and so forth so if you don't want seeds um, if you like the seed stalks if you like the petals you can leave two or three seed stalks and let them grow it's not going to really do big damage it's not going to really take a lot of energy away depending relative to the to the plant uh, if you have a small pot I wouldn't let seed stalks grow uh, but a plant like this I can leave and let two or three seed stalks grow and it's not going to really do any damage okay now I can't shoot this video close this video out without showing you the Lord Voldemort and you know I will be taking at least six to eight of cuttings of this and keep them over the fall winter and into next spring and do it all over again and that's what this is this is rootings from last year if you're new to my channel that I planted in a circle in the pot and here it is Lord Voldemort and again this one still to this this year refuses to go to seed and they say some of the best coleus don't go to seed very easily or at all <laughs> so um, but the Lord Voldemort coleus and this is the only um, fishnet I have and this again was two fishnet rootings two or three I think just two from last year again fall winter spring of of 2024 I guess and it's doing fine again another this is another coleus that does well if you want to keep wet rootings all over the fall and winter if you want to keep rootings these do really well because they have very heavy seat um, they have very heavy stems they're very hardy and they generally do really well the only difference you'll see with these is um, the veining over the fall and winter will become less vibrant and more washed out but it will stay so I'm already planning to take numerous cuttings of this fishnet stocking okay and here's some others there's a mix I put together of uh, Christmas candy and a Saturn and there's a Saturn rings these were these two here were um, rosy dawn these were part of my rosy dawn order i ordered one saturn's ring and one or two saturns and this is one of the uh 
live plugs that I ordered from Rosie Dawn Gardens. The other larger Saturn, I believe I sold two weeks ago. But you can see these grow really, really well. Okay, everybody, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's informative. If you're interested in collecting seeds, harvesting seeds, uh, just, again, leave them on as long as possible to make sure that they're mature seeds. And you'll do fine. And again, I will show you how to separate the seeds, a little system I have. It's nothing, no rocket science. So stay tuned. I hope everybody's doing well. hope your coleus is doing well. Any problems, you know, get, just drop me a message here or on Instagram. Uh, I get lots of messages from people. Uh, and I always, I always try to get back. Lots of thank yous to all my regular followers that constantly chime in, send videos, uh, or send messages, kind words. It's very of encouragement. I really appreciate everybody. And I did hit 12,000 followers. 12,000 subscribers and 2 million views. So thank you everybody for watching Jim's Holiest Ecolius.